Weeds are a great indicator of the conditions your plants are surviving and thriving in. So if you're establishing a new garden or you have a garden bed that's overrun by a very specific type of weed, it's a good indication of potential issues that may be there, uh, potential benefits that could be there, and what plants would thrive and survive based on the conditions that the weeds are growing in. So the first time I learned about this actually was not at all in the world of food production. It was actually in the world of reclamation and it was in university in a field course on ecology. Now in that course, we use something called plant squares to count and look at how many plants or species of plants were inside of a certain space. Now, one of the things we looked at is if there is a higher density of one very specific type of plant, what potentially could be happening in that space to make that happen. So for example, a really sandy soil has very specific types of grasses. And if you're noticing a high influx of those grasses in that sand, it means that that sand is beginning to establish or solidify in a sense. And it's going from primary succession to a secondary succession, if you will. Ecologists and reclamation folk and all that sort of stuff actually quite often use this to look at soil conditions all the way to the health of that actual ecosystem. And if there is something lacking, why? Is it because of a man-made issue or is it because Mother Nature just decided that spot needs to be super saline? Number one thing I do want to mention is that this is by no means a refined science and it is mostly used for guidelines not for solid facts if you will so take some of this with a grain of salt use it as a barometer don't use it as a bible and to be quite honest with any sort of science if it's not newton's laws or the theory of gravity you probably best just not getting dogmatic about it and letting it roll off your back particularly when it comes to a hobby. I won't be going through very specific nutrient issues, deficiencies, or excesses that can affect the weed, I guess, distribution, only because those ones, that is a very weak science, in my opinion, as to how solidified or sure we are that that's the case. So those ones I am gonna leave out. The other one I'm gonna leave out is actually environmental conditions. So for example, this tree or a forest or any sort of scenario, there's not much light. And because there's not much light, there is not much growing. And therefore, weeds that would and do show up are weeds that do best in low lights and not in high light. It's not a soil condition issue, it's an environmental condition issue. So that I'm not gonna talk about either. Only because if I did, the video would be enormously long. Okay, number one is excessive moisture. So sedges, mosses, and obviously cattails are great indicators of excessive moisture. Now the rule with all of these is that these need to show up in excess, meaning there's a higher concentration of that weed compared to any other weed in the area. If it's evenly distributed with other weeds, it's very likely that it's not an indication of anything and it's literally just weeds growing <laughs> so keep that in mind now if that higher moisture is caused by lack of airflow or lack of sun then that's not a, a soil issue so use some common sense but if it is caused by potentially pooling water for large portions of the year it may be time to consider looking at a video or some concepts on compaction to actually reduce and leave that to allow for proper water infiltration or what we like to call percolation. The next one is actually dry soils. So dry soils have some very unique characteristics in what they can and cannot grow. Now, if you're showing things like thistles, spurge, yarrow, lamb's tongue, hawkweed, sorrel, all of these and or these with nothing else or very little vegetation, you're living in a world of dry soil. And that doesn't mean anything other than the fact that you may want to consider shade cloth or irrigation in those spaces or looking at your soil texture to determine if you need to add compost or mulch or some sort of soil amendment to help bring up that water holding capacity. The next one is salt. Saline soil. These are very commonly seen in Canadian uh, ditches along the roadways because some of us, not all of us, like to apply salt. In our case, we like to use the tailings piles from potash mines to distribute on our roads, and that contains salt. It's a fertilizer. The byproduct has a 
butt ton of salt in it. Or the spinoff from that is things like Dock and Foxtail Barley, Kosha, Russian Thistle. All of these survive and thrive in spaces that are more saline. We see these inland in Saskatchewan in particular around lakes that are more saline. So Manitou Beach area, that they tend to have a higher concentration of these very specific weed varieties and that just means we have a little bit of extra salt now i don't have a way for you to reclaim this in most cases because if you're showing signs of this much it's probably not a good thing and it's probably gonna be very difficult to remedy the only thing i could say is don't plant in those spaces or plant plants that are saline resistant but i mean that's <laughs> very difficult thing to do. That is definitely something to think about if these weeds are showing up in excess. You may want to consider just not putting anything in that area. Now, oddly enough, you can kind of determine pH sometimes with these. Again, higher concentrations are a good indicator, but alkalinity. So alkaline, aka sweet soil is what we like to call that, can have things like Bermuda grass, clover, broadleaf plantain. So another thing to look at when we're looking at this from the aspect of it being a pH issue is not just the composition or the density of these weeds, but more specifically how well those weeds are doing in that space. So take time to breathe and think about this, but if you had hydrangea or a blueberry that was doing very well, it's a good indication that your soil is probably in the right pH range because those are very pH sensitive plants. Now spin that onto the opposite way of looking at this and we look at weeds. If a weed that does well in alkaline soil is thriving, surviving, and expanding its horizons in that space, it's probably a good indication that that soil pH and therefore nutrient availability matches up. So that's what we look at when we're losing weeds to determine pH. Now again, not an exact science, but just a good barometer to look at if we need to investigate further. So in the case of acidic soil indicators, we've got sorrel, we've got knotweed, and we've got crabgrass. There's other ones in there as well, but again, we want to look at the performance of the plant and if the plant is doing exceptionally well in that space, maybe in a, a time to investigate what that pH is at. And by the way, it's this is called sour soil. If people are using those words to describe them, sweet, sour. Okay, the next one is actually compacted soil. So compacted soil is kind of the opposite of a sandy soil and the sand cliffs being established with grasses, for example. Now, of course, a compacted soil could be have excess moisture or pooling water, but it also could be dry in the sense that it's not allowing water to penetrate and move properly. So things like wild garlic, dandelions, chickweed, these are all good indicators of compacted soil. So think of it this way. If you were to go into your nearest park, in particular where people and kids and children have stomped around a lot and you know that that space is probably pretty compacted just from foot traffic and that sort of thing, very often you will see a lot, a lot of dandelions quite often. Chickweed is another one where we tend to see it on paths and walkways and on spaces of our lawn and garden where there is foot traffic and again, very likely compacted soil from that traffic because that's where it survives and thrives. Now, they use two different mechanisms to do this, um, but the chickweed, for example, has a very shallow root system. If you've ever had to weed out chickweed, you'd notice that there's like next to no root system. That's why they do well in a compacted soil. So that's an indicator of potentially a compacted soil. Now, I personally don't mind chickweed. I actually use it as almost like a green manure, green mulch, if you will. It's so low profile. Its roots don't really compete with normal plant roots. So I kind of just let it sit and do its own thing. But that is something, if you have really high density, it's time to take out the coat hanger and your handy dandy homemade pen penetrometer to determine if your soil is compacted. Now the one thing that you probably aren't going to be good at and your eyes are probably better at figuring out is actually the texture of the soil because weeds aren't good indicators of the soil texture for the most part. And if you want to figure out what your soil texture is and how to remedy it, then you want to check out this video right here. Geek Crew, I will talk to you guys later. Bye!